I want you to think about a time when you paused, maybe in the middle of your day, and you simply looked up and observed the clouds. Now then, let's go up here and just begin highlighting these clouds just right on the top up here. There we go, wherever you want. Just some pretty little things going on. Maybe you watch them form different shapes. Maybe you just kind of follow them as they kind of drift along. Bring some of it right around like that. And there and here. Sort of let your imagination go. Clouds are transitory. Clouds change. And so clouds are made out of water vapor. Y'all didn't know you are going to get into meteorology today, did you? <laughs> <laughs> they're made out of water vapor. And over time, they're going to get so full of that vapor that they reach what is known as a saturation point. And at some point, they simply cannot hold anymore. They're going to dump out rain and storms, all that good stuff. If you wanted to show rain coming out of the bottom of this cloud, all you have to do is grab a little of this dark and pull down. We're not too much unlike the clouds ourselves. There's gonna be times in life where we have different moods, different feelings. Think about the feelings you go through in the course of a single day. What about over time, when life stresses and life demands just weigh you down to the point where you reach a saturation point. Right. Well, this is a monster cloud, big cloud. There's going to be a big storm coming here. If you got a little boat, you better put it away. Mm. It's going to get washed right on out. The weather's always changing here in the Bob Ross universe. Sometimes on a perfectly beautiful day, the air goes still. The almighty sky darkens. For a minute or so, it's quiet. Then, a sudden gust of wind and... Hand me that umbrella, will you? We never invite storms. They just come. Sometimes we watch from a safe place. Sometimes we get caught right in the middle of one. Some love splashing around in the rain. Others can't stand getting wet. But no matter your taste, the ending is always the same. The storm clouds pass. The sun comes out again. There he is. Rain last night, there's puddles here. Now all the little birds and everything can come here and have a drink. Look at that. And new clouds enter the frame. I'm gonna put a happy little cloud in the sky today. And I'm just gonna take the corner of the brush and just, just let it bounce around, let them play, let them have fun. Clouds are very free, very free. Just let them go. There's going to be times in our life, y'all, this is the lesson of the clouds. We have to learn to just let go. It's the storms outside that we can't control, that we can never change. But we can let go of the storms inside. Y'all, when I'm at my saturation point, I'm good to no one, not even my cat. Okay? <laughs> we're certainly not giving 100% to others when we're at our saturation point. Just like in life, we have to have a little sadness to appreciate the good times. Because if everything was good all the time, pretty soon you'd be getting, just accepting that as, as normal. Once in a while, you'd need a little sorrow in your life, probably. So I want you to think about the people that energize you. Those activities, maybe those hobbies that you enjoy doing, that bring you life. And you've got to make time for them. We're in an auditorium in Huntsville, Alabama, listening to Rachel Daniel. Rachel's not a motivational speaker. She's not a meteorologist, not a painter. She's an academic advisor at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. And so here's how we connect this to our students. Don't just talk about classes and registration, yada, yada. We have to do that, right? But extend those conversations into self-care whenever you can. You're the person that can help them to find balance. I can go in here and I can really, literally create any kind of world that I want. There's tranquility and peace in my world. There's never any violence. I have all my little animal friends. They all live right here with me. Kip Hubbard is another UAB advisor. This is called the Joy of Advising. I'm assuming everyone in here, I'm hoping, right, gets joy out of advising. Kip and Rachel aren't tag teaming a lecture or a TED talk. They're in the middle of a competition, making a presentation to their academic peers about life lessons inspired by Bob Ross. If Kip and Rachel win, they're guaranteed to spread the joy all over again at the national conference in Orlando. Wait a minute. What part of Florida did Bob Ross live in again? Someone asking what part of Florida I live in. I live right in Orlando. 
right close to Mickey Mouse's house. Uh, good morning. So how did Kip and Rachel wind up on this happy little stage? What inspired them to get up here? And how have they applied the life lessons we're hearing to their own careers and even their own lives? And how did their presentation end in dramatic fashion? The emotions overcame me, so by the time I got back to my table, I'm almost in tears. She called me, and she was in tears, not happy tears. It sounded like they had been in a car accident or something. I thought something was wrong. We're in Huntsville, Alabama, for a regional conference hosted by NICADA, the National Academic Advising Association. School representatives from Mississippi to Puerto Rico are here. Hundreds of nerds. And thanks to the University of Alabama, Birmingham, so is one almighty ace in the hole. You can be the best. All you have to do is practice, devote some time to it. Well, I get to talk in here and trees just appear everywhere. 48 colleges. Only one will be crowned the best advisor. A lot of my college professors reminded me of this guy. Passed the, anyone, anyone, the tariff bill, the Hawley Smoot tariff. A few of them acted like this guy. There will be no eating, E-A-T-I-N-G. No eating in this class. And then there was this guy. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Okay, maybe that was junior high. In any case, for many, College is a rite of passage, a time of personal growth, and figuring out what you want to do with the rest of your life. Maybe you want to be a brain surgeon or an architect or a financial analyst, or if you're really ambitious, you might study to be a podcast host. College is also a time when you're looking for help, advice. This is where Kip Hubbard comes in. I look at academic advising as supporting students in their college experience. We teach them how to uh, overcome their obstacles, meet their goals. We support them, we advocate for them. Kip is an Alabama native. He knows what it's like to walk the campus of UAB. Kip was a student here. It's where he found his path. I actually took a social work class and in the social work class, it was very relatable, the things that they talked about. And I, I felt like, you know, that's something I can do. I, I feel like I can help people meet their needs. Kip grew up with Bob Ross watching the joy of painting during its initial run on Alabama's PBS station. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe today, let's put a little sun up here. I like to do little suns. The first advice I would give you is don't put it right dead in the center of the canvas. Put it to one side or the other, but not right in the center. But it was during more recent times that Kip and Bob began to connect in a deeper way. A couple of years ago, my wife and I were on a vacation at the beach and we couldn't get the cable to work for some reason. So we turned on the Roku channel and someone had been watching the Bob Ross channel. So we started watching it. See all these little grassy areas once in a while, tap into the bright red and just keep on going. There, there we go, there we go, there we go. We fell asleep pretty easily that night. So we did it the next night and we did it the next night. Believe it or not, we have done it for over a year and a half now. Every night we watch Bob Ross before we go to sleep. Tummy's full and it's a nice warm day and off to sleep we'll go. And just like sharing the joy of painting, a shared joy of Bob Ross can often enrich a relationship. It was her idea for Valentine's Day, let's take this trip together and spend some time together, go to the Bob Ross experience. Kip Hubbard was already feeling a crush for Bob. His Valentine's Day trip inside the famous Indiana house and its surrounding gardens cemented his love. One day, rejuvenated and well-rested, Kip went into a bookstore and saw a book by Rob Perlman called Be a Peaceful Cloud. I brought it to work and uh, mentioned it to a co-worker, Rachel Daniel, who is a co-presenter with me on this project. And uh, she said, I love Bob Ross. I grew up watching him. If you couldn't tell from my accent, I'm from Northeast Alabama, so I grew up in Sand Mountain. That's where snake handling happens. There's also good stuff like biscuits and chocolate gravy. I did grow up on a farm, and so we were so poor growing up that I did not have access to cable. And so I was a PBS kid. I grew up on things like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Sesame Street. We've come here today to bring you some of the famous barnyard sounds, the oink oinks and the woof woofs, which have made this farm a favorite of children everywhere. Reading Rainbow, shout out to LeVar Burton also. And it's bound to make you laugh, cry, learn, or wonder. 
And I remember one day just flipping through the channels, you know, your board kit on the Saturday, it's raining. And I remember seeing Bob Ross and I, I was into art and stuff. Today I'm gonna to start out and I'm gonna cover the entire canvas with just a nice thin even coat of liquid clear with the tiniest little touch of Indian yellow in it. I was so like blown away. I'm like, what is this guy doing? Where can I get his paints? You know, obviously I didn't have access to those things. I had some cheap acrylics from Walmart, tried to actually paint like Bob. Turned out pretty crummy. <laughs> I was not a, a Bob Ross painter. And the more I watched the show, the more I realized I wasn't watching it for following along and painting with him. I was just drawn to what he did. I was like, I wanted to watch him paint the trees. You know me, I'm a tree fanatic. Let's put a happy tree, Libs. Oh, right over my other trees. He just became like this tour of sorts in my life, you know, 14 year old kid or a teenager and you're watching this guy who's just chill and you just wanna, you wanna be that, you know, it's like, so I felt like I was one of the early, you know, all, I, all the new kids are now getting into Bob Ross cause he's kind of cool and exciting in that way. But I mean, for, for someone that didn't have cable like that, that was so opening to my world. And so as a PBS kid, you know, I felt like I was very educated in that sense. When Kip Hubbard gets his happy little idea to make a Bob Ross themed presentation, he already knows the perfect person to make his initial pitch, the PBS kid. He somehow knew of my interest in Bob Ross, so he comes strong along with this book and I'm like, that looks really cool. Sort of jokingly, I said, why don't we do some type of presentation at the regional conference on the connection between Bob Ross and his Bobisms, so to speak. One of the most fantastic things about this whole technique is the fact that we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. So many times we have students in our office and they're devastated, maybe because they're high achieving students and they flunked an exam, or maybe it's a student who has a low self-esteem. When we look at retention studies, the students that feel connected, that feel supported, that have that network of sorts, they have their tree friends, if you will, they're the ones that thrive on campus. They're the future leaders that we have. Kip's been advising students one-on-one -on -one for a quarter century, but he's never given a presentation like this to his peers before. I think it was really great to partner with someone that has that many years of experiences that, that's had a great story to tell. Uh, Kip has come and presented to my class before about attitude and you know areas like that. I'm like, okay, you may have not presented on a national level, regional level, but you know he's been a maestro of sorts in all those different areas. So it, it's part of it's pulling all that stuff out of him that, that was already there. But there was also stuff he pulled out from me, like I remember when we were thinking about the happy little clouds, you know, I was just thinking about it from a, oh, you know, the quote says this, and Kip's like, we know clouds get filled up with stuff, with rain and everything. And I was like, whoa, you know, next thing you know, I'm looking at meteorology, I'm on, you know, weather.gov, and I'm like, saturation point. Don't we reach a saturation point? All you have to do is just very gently bring all this together. Very gently. This is two hairs and some air. I can't imagine a project like this being done alone. I think we play off of each other in a really fun way when we're presenting live, especially. We just do a little fun painting and just sort of let the brush just bounce around and play and let it have fun. Just relax and enjoy. See there? That easy, that easy. Kip and Rachel submit their presentation to the university. They get approved to participate at the regional conference. Prime time. Monday at 10 a.m. They gave you a good slot. They gave us, to me, one of the best slots you can have. That's the Bob Ross magic working right there. The joy of advising isn't some shtick either, some gimmick. It's about Kip and Rachel's pursued interest in supporting and inspiring their students. It's almost impossible not to be successful in college with all the resources that you have. And advisors are here to, to be that trail guide to connect students with these resources so that on your canvas, you can move mountains and you can accomplish things that you never thought you could. And you better believe they've done the research. We found a statistical analysis of Bob Ross's paintings. And if you didn't know when he paints, basically trees appear 91% of his paintings, there's a 93% chance that when he paints a tree, he's gonna throw another tree up beside it. I don't want him to be lonely. We'll give him a friend that lives there with him. There we are. Maybe this one's got a big old root in it. And goes right out there and holds him up. Shoot, let's get crazy. Let's have one on the other side too. We went beyond the surface level stuff of what we found in that initial book. 
by Rob Perlman. We love you, Rob Perlman. That was a great springboard. And as we dug deeper, the meaning just went so much deeper. And so when we think about the trees, you know, Bob's popping those trees up beside each other. It's because he knew that we need each other. We can't do it on our own. Didn't know you had so much power, did you? You really can do this. Can move mountains, trees, mighty rivers. This would be a good place to put a little river. There. As you paint, you begin to see things. Don't worry about what you're going to paint. Just start painting. For most college students, that first day, maybe even that first year, feels like a blank canvas. What courses am I going to take? What clubs am I going to join? What am I interested in? What's my schedule? What's my major? These books cost how much? Decisions can be paralyzing in some sense. It can be the point where you can't make the perfect choice, so just do nothing at all. And so what Bob kind of tells us throughout, you know, the series really is he talks to us about this is your world, you're the creator, find freedom on the canvas. You can do anything that you like here and you can create any kind of world that you want. There we go. There's enough old bad stuff going on in the world here. We make it very peaceful and nice. Kip and Rachel encourage their students to believe that bravery pays off. Yeah, let's go ahead, what the heck. Be brave. This really is your bravery test. Let's come in here and just put a huge tree, maybe. Yeah, what the heck, what the heck. Nothing ventured and all that. We can connect that to students and tell them that it's okay to take risks because risks lead to new opportunities. And new opportunities lead to a great adventure. We can inspire others with not only Bob's bravery test, but our own, because we've all gone through it. Years ago, I studied portraits. And after a long time, my portrait teacher took me aside one night and he said, Bob, I gotta tell you the truth. He said, I want you to go paint bushes and trees because that's where your heart is and leave portrait painting to someone else. <laughs> and I have, I've taken his advice and I get along much better with bushes and trees and playing with little squirrels. And I think what Bob Ross inspires us to do is to roll with the punches. I saw one episode where he's painting a pond. Just a happy little pond that lives right there. And he puts this big blob of white paint and seemingly messes up the painting. Redefine that edge, I sort of messed it up. And he takes his, his two inch brush and he, he pulls it down into the reflection of the pond and a couple of swipes left and right, and you can't even tell that that blob was there. It becomes a reflection in the, the pond. And it's gorgeous, because you'll be able to see that right through there. And people will wonder, how in the world did you done that? And it's so easy, it really is easy. At the end of the painting, you don't see a mistake. And we'll just put a little signature on there. There, I have a very short name, so it's, it only takes a second. What you see, is a reflection on what had happened and how you overcome that. So, don't worry about it. If your tree didn't look just like the one you see, you see here, that means they're probably better. We really are not trying to teach you to copy with these. We're trying to show you how to make effects and turn you loose on the world. Because you can own the world. My first conversation with Kip and Rachel happens a few days before the big presentation. They're not going to Huntsville just for the fun of it, or just for their Nikita Conference gift bags. They're going to Huntsville to win. Your first presentation after 25 years of advising. Any nerves? You know, obviously there's going to be <clears throat> nerves. I mean, I'm nervous right now talking to you, right? <laughs> well, I am you know, very intimidating. I get that. <laughs> Getting in front of anybody and talking is, you know, going to be intimidating. But having said that, number one, Bob Ross's spirit is with us. We believe that. Just believe in yourself. Believe that you can do it because you can. You really can. You can do anything. We're just making those connections and the rest is up to Bob and he does it so well. Everything in life is a learning experience. It's not failure. If it doesn't work the way you want it, it's not failure. It just means you learn something. And as long as you're learning, you're not failing. Bob tells us that the fruit's out on the limb. We have to step out on the limb to get the fruit. And how do you do that? Well, you present after 25 years of advising for the first time and, and you take that chance. It's Monday at 10 a.m. The lights go down. The crowd hushes. As Kip Hubbard and Rachel Daniel step out on a limb and onto the stage 
to share their joy of advising. This is your world. You can move mountains. He may have not understood the ecological reason of why trees grow together, but here's what Bob did know. We can't stand alone if we're going to stand at all. You're probably imagining right now being at the top of the mountain and it looks good. You're looking across the landscape and you see just a vastness and you feel good because you've climbed that mountain. We have to nourish each other, communicate with each other. And it's more than a matter of just surviving, it's a matter of thriving. We can become the model for help seeking behavior. That's the thing that we can do. How about this? What if we went on the journey with them and climbed the mountain because we've done it before. We can teach them how to do it so that when they get to the top of the mountain, we can enjoy the view with them. And here's something to think about. Regardless of the outcome, we have to praise the process. We have to acknowledge their efforts. Because just like us, their landscape did not get developed by sitting on their hands. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Kip and Rachel win Best in Region at the Nakeda Conference, passing their bravery test with flying colors. It does wonderful things to my heart to know that you're watching the shows and that you're having fantastic success. My favorite part of conference was actually the conversations that spun out after the presentation. We had people that came up to us, new advisors, folks that had never seen Bob Ross before, and they said, I'm going to go binge watch him now. This is my jam. This is something I'm really into. We'll come back and we'll put all the little, little clouds in and let them dance around and have fun. I know, they're sitting at home saying, boy, that sure is a weird looking cloud Bob's making today. Let's see if we can straighten him out. The competition was almighty, but out of 48 colleges, UAB and the Joy of Advising stood out like a great big oak tree. And here we are presenting on Bob Ross life lessons on how to inspire students. So we were not sure how that would go. In fact, there was another session called, What Would Johnny Cash Do? I guess, you know, with the close calls I've had and the things I've learned, I've learned how to hold on a little bit more as each day goes by. Nikita's executive director confirmed Kip and Rachel's victory was significant. That uh, our presentation was no doubt the best and had the best reviews. And So Bob Ross kicked Johnny Cash's ass, it sounds he like. He did, absolutely <laughs> did. Among others, for sure. The lowest point in my life. Oh, and remember that whole bit about Rachel calling Kip and crying? And she called me and she was in tears, not happy tears. It sounded like they had been in a car accident or something. I thought something was wrong. Kip had to leave Huntsville early, but Rachel hung back for the closing ceremonies. She knew the presentation had gone over well, but she was also tired and hungry. She had met a lot of new people who had been inspired by her words. Spreading joy can be a little exhausting sometimes. And then, still somewhat in a daze, Rachel hears her name being called, feels her table mates nudging her towards the dais. When they pulled me aside and said just how alarmingly overwhelming their responses were, like positive responses, I mean, I'm up there and I'm almost like Miss America. I'm like, they could have had me a tiara and I could have waved and everything. There she is, Miss America. Emotions overcame me. So by the time I got back to my table, I'm almost in tears. You know, I'm, I've got that conference tired kind of look to me already. And someone at the table said, have you, have you called Kip yet? So of course I run outside and start like crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to let him know about this. It was, it was just outstanding. <laughs> now these two academic advisors aren't just basking in the afterglow. They have brought their joy of advising presentation to the web too. They keep refining it, keep practicing. Just like Bob, it keeps them sharp as they prepare for October's national conference in Orlando, a place that was for a spell practically Bob Ross's backyard. And this time, they're doing it in front of bigger crowds on a bigger stage. I just let it flow. No pressure here. Absolutely no pressure. I think one of the challenges we may face is we're looking at potentially having 200 people in a room, you know, if we pack the place out, and how do you engage an audience when maybe you can't make eye contact with every single person and you're trying to, you know, really, really kind of move the room. Whether or not Kip Hubbard and Rachel Daniel raised their pallets in victory in Bob's backyard remains to be seen. Of course, we're rooting for them to come out on top. Anytime you devote some time to practice, you have it lost. You're always a winner. For creatives, painters, and podcast hosts, even college advisors, it's about the process. It's more about the learning than the winning. This presentation has changed the way I think about my life. 
the way that I advise students. Like you may have heard the term, you got to eat your own dog food. <laughs> you got to, you know, take your own medicine. And I think in so many ways, you know, these lessons that we're presenting, I've, I've really been more mindful of them, you know, ways that I'm incorporating them in my own life. It is exciting to be a part of this and to get some attention for it. Often, the teacher must become the student. And for Kip and Rachel, their Bob Ross learned life lessons have them spreading the joy and the legacy of a fuzzy hair TV painter who's taught and is still teaching millions of happy little folks around the world. He's still around, you know, his words live on. There's wisdom that he has shared with us that I doubt will ever go away. And the happy little trees will be with me forever. And maybe most important, it makes people understand and believe that they can do this. You don't have to be somebody special. Anybody can do this. You really can. And that, that truly is the joy of painting. When, when you produce something like this, you know what a pleasure it is to give someone a gift that you've produced yourself or to hang it in your home and people come by and they say, you didn't do that. You didn't do that. People won't believe that you could paint like that, but you can. You really can. And every day, as I say, I see more and more evidences of it every day. The old clock at the conference tells me we've got another finished podcast episode. I want to thank my guests, Kip Hubbard and Rachel Daniel. This happy little episode was produced with help from James Shapiro at Janssen Media and David Allen Sellers at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Episode mixed by digital sound and video of Daytona Beach, Florida. Support your local public television station. Say thanks for giving us Bob Ross and the joy of painting. We want to see your paintings. Use hashtag paint like Bob Ross. Bob Ross certified instructors, they're the only ones that know how to teach you Bob's world-famous painting method. So don't settle for second best. Find the local CRI at bobross.com and then click Take a Class. And if you got your own Bob Ross story to tell, we want to hear about it, leave us a message at 866-FANBRUSH. Or you can email us at podcast at bobross.com. And follow us on Facebook at The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. I'm Ron Scalzo. The Joy of Bob Ross is written and produced by me, Ron Scalzo, in partnership with Bob Ross, Inc. Bob Ross name and images are registered trademarks of Bob Ross, Inc.